Now, what do you do if you don't have a graph drawn and you can't just read the domain and the range straight off your graph? Well, you've got two choices. You can either draw one. Now, you might be nervous about that because you might think, well, I'm not very good at drawing very many graphs. We're going to get really good at drawing graphs in this course. And so this is a skill that we're going to work on. The other thing that you can do, and often it's a good idea anyway, before you've even started to draw your graph, is you'll look for limitations to X and Y that are actually in the formula. Now, if you're looking to find the domain from the formula, you're basically looking out for two potential problems. You might have one or the other of them or even both of them in your formula. Now, one problem is that the denominator of a fraction can never equal zero. We can't ever divide by zero. It's just mathematically impossible. And to check that, put anything divided by zero into your calculator and it will just tell you that it's an error. The other thing we can't do is we can't take the square root of a negative number at least not in this course, that gives us imaginary numbers. So looking out for these two problems really helps us to find the values of x that won't be possible. And if we find the values of x that won't be possible, we can reason that perhaps all the other values of x are possible except for those ones. So some examples here of our first potential problem. All of these formulas have got fractions in them or some kind of divided by it you'd be looking for. So you're looking out for whatever is on the bottom of a fraction and saying, that can't be zero. So this first one's really straightforward. X is literally just sitting on the bottom of a fraction, so we know that X can't be zero. Can X be anything else? Yes. So we'd say that the domain is all real X, and then you could just write a comma and say, oh, except X can't be zero. So it's almost like a little disclaimer, everything except this. Now, there's often many ways of doing the same thing. It would be completely mathematically correct and acceptable to say X has to be less than zero or greater than zero. It just can't be zero. I personally would prefer that you write it like this, but it's not wrong to write it that way. And it's sort of perhaps handy for later on when we're looking at intervals to understand that that is the same thing. For the next one, it's a little bit more complicated because what's on the bottom of our fraction is not just an X, it's X squared minus four. So my first line of working, and I know what you're thinking here, do you really need to write this working? When you're learning, yes, I think it's a good idea because it's gonna get you into good habits. I would just look at that whole thing and rewrite it. X squared minus four can't equal zero, not equal to zero. Now there's two ways you could um, go from there. You might just spot, oh, that means that this part can't be four, so X can't be positive or negative two. If you can spot that, that's great, but it's also handy to know some strategies. If you're solving this, X squared minus four is not equal to zero, it's exactly the same as solving it with an equal sign. It's just we're using a not equal sign. Now, two ways you could go, you could add four to both sides. And just as you know that when you square two or negative two, you get four. Well, you can also say that it's not going to be two or negative two in this um, case. The other thing you could do here is spot the difference of two squares and factorize it and say this is X plus two, X minus two, and then not equal to zero. And just as you would say when two things multiply to make zero, one of them must have been zero, here we can say if two things are multiplying and can't be zero, neither one of them can be zero. So you can see there that X can't be negative two because that would make this part zero and X can't be positive two because it would make that part be zero. So you're gonna come up with the same bit of working there. Now that on its own is not the domain. We need to acknowledge that X can't be two or negative two but it could actually be anything else. So the correct way to write the domain for this one would be all real X comma except except for positive and negative two. Now, this is gonna get messy writing it this way, and I think you can see now why the ones in green are preferable. You could say, look, X can be less than negative two, or it can be in between negative two and two, or it can be greater than two, but this is a bit of a mouthful, and it's you know annoying to write it all out. This is gonna be quicker and easier. Now, this last one is a little bit more complicated. We have X squared plus five X plus six in the denominator, so that whole thing can't equal zero. Now you can write that as your first line of working, then you'd want to factorize it and see that we've got x plus two multiplied by x plus three, and all of that can't equal zero. Now, just as when we were solving this sort of thing equaling zero, we would say x has to be negative two or negative three to make either of these parts zero. Now we're saying x can't be negative two or negative three, but just as in our other examples, x can be everything else. So we'd say it's everything except for negative two and negative three, because after all, if it is negative two or negative three, let's try subbing one in. Negative two squared is four, minus 10 
that's going to give negative 6 plus 6 that will give 0 and that's going to create that potential problem so that's how we list our domains look out for fractions also look out for equations that are sort of hidden it might have something divided by something else I think it's easiest to write things as fractions because then that denominator really leaps out at you as being a potential problem and you need to make sure that it doesn't equal zero now our other potential problem was we can't take the square root of a negative number so anytime you see a square root bracket you need to look out for this this also would apply if you had a, a fourth root or a sixth root or anything with a um, an even number here a cubed root wouldn't create the same problem because we can take the cubed root of a negative number think of what negative 2 cubed is it's negative 8 so those ones do work all right so I'm going to suggest here being super careful don't scoff these sorts of problems are actually really easy to mess up because you think oh it's so easy and you jump to conclusions so my first line of working is just to take whatever is underneath that square root bracket write it down and say it has to be greater than or equal to zero why equal to zero because you can take the square root of zero it just equals zero put it into your calculator if you like and have a look and that's because zero zeros is zero so that's perfectly acceptable so it can be zero it just can't be less than zero so we need that little equal sign there all of that has to be greater than or equal to zero then it's super easy just to solve that little uh, inequality by just adding 4 to both sides and that, that way I don't mess it up x has to be greater than or equal to 4 it's amazing how often people just look at this and go oh x has to be uh, less than 4 and they'll get it the wrong way around so writing that statement really clearly add 4 to both sides no way you can mess it up this one looks similar but again easy to make a simple mistake so just write down your 4 minus x and write that it needs to be greater than or equal to 0 same step as the last one this one here I'm going to add x to both sides so that I get the x on the little side and now I can see that I can keep it like that if I want to or I could rewrite it this way and keeping x on the pointy side or the little side I can see that x has to be less than or equal to 4 again it can be equal to it because it's perfectly okay for 4 minus x to actually equal 0 down here though we've got both problems in the same equation so we've got a square root bracket and that tells us that the stuff inside there needs to be zero or greater but then we need to notice hold on a minute we've actually got the first potential problem too this is on the bottom of a fraction so actually it can't equal zero this time and if x was four this wouldn't work out we can't have the square root of zero because it's sitting on the bottom of a fraction now so in this case it looks a lot like the first one but our first line is that x minus four has to be greater than zero and note that i haven't put that little equal sign there so of course x must be greater than 4.